Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM Power Systems Europe on AX and Linux. This is part 12 of a series about NJMON and NIMON, and this one's about adding your own stats to the NJMON database. NJMON and NMI gather lots of operating system stats and some about the hardware that it's sitting on, but users always want more data. Sometimes, oh, that's a really good idea. I'll add that to the mainline code. But sometimes they want data that is just about their applications that they're running or particular things about their company that they want to capture. And it's not generically useful for everybody else. So we have a new command called measure and that allows you to add your own data. Now you could use something like curl for example if you have that on your operating system to send the data to InfluxDB but if you want it in the NJMON database it has to have those same NJMON tags attached to it so there are things like the, the host name the operating system the serial number the architecture of the hardware that sort of thing otherwise you won't be able to find it along with your operating system performance data now measure is actually a cut down version of the NIMON that gathers the tags and then sends along your own data with it. This means it pushes the data straight at the influxed DB database without going through the NJMON daemon if you're operating that way. So let's get stuck straight in. If you type in measure minus H, it gives you a reminder of what we're going to go through now. But we have a measure, then there's a, a minus little g for your measure name. Then there's the capital G for the actual statistics. This is in InfluxDB line protocol format, which is very simple. We'll look at that in a second. Then you have to tell it, as you do with NIMON, where to send the data. So minus I for the host name or the IP address, minus P for the port, and minus X for the database. And then if you set it requiring authentication then you can use the minus y and minus z for the user and password minus lowercase g the measure name it must be unique and not already in use by njmon we looked at the measure names and the difference between that and the statistics in the previous video video 11 of the njmon series be quite specific though don't just say something like oracle uh, next week you might have two oracle databases so you actually want to know which of the databases is it and then you want to put that into the measure name try to make it quite specific for the actual data not like stats or something very vague like that now the minus capital g are the stats these are statistics in influx db line protocol format which is fairly simple you have a name equals and a value the comma separated no spaces are allowed in all of the stats we can have floating point numbers, we can have an integer, which is followed by an I, and we can have a text in double quotes. So the floating point is fairly obvious. We can have you know, 100.0 or uh, decimal numbers in here, that's fine. We can, if it's an integer, we put this I at the end. And a um, bit of a note here that once you define a particular name as an integer, the first time that goes in, then that particular name has to be an integer. You can't change it later to a floating point number. Now internally to InfluxDB, all the integers are actually held as floating point numbers, so I don't really see the point of using integers at all, but they may look nicer. It doesn't have any problems where if you put in two, uh, and when you're trying to compare it to something, it doesn't give you like 1.9999998, uh, then you can sort of not get matches with your data. It'll give you two back. I'm not sure how it's doing that, it's very clever. And then a text uh, has to be in those double quotes, you um, have to be careful in there. You typically store config information or text, like perhaps an error message or something, if you really want to in there. Don't forget, we're trying to graph our data, but you can't graph text. Some examples in here where you can go wrong, because your shell will remove double quotes from things, it won't actually get to the command. So if you use, quote, Nigel Space Griffiths, quote, then it will see um, the minus G name equals Nigel, then it'll find a space. And so it won't actually work. It will then see this Griffiths equals A21, which is clearly rubbish. I only wish I was 21. So the way to work around that is you have to double quote them on the shell command line, and then it actually gets the real data, the double quotes and the space actually get to the command. Alternatively, you could just delete the spaces from the names, or perhaps you wanna move things to something more sensible so you can help with looking things up. First name, Nigel, last name, Griffiths. So then we don't have any space problems. Just like in I1, we have to tell it where to send the data, which is the influx database, minus I for the IP address or the host name, 
or where you're running InfluxDB. The port number for InfluxDB standard is 8086. If you change that, you'll have to change that. You have to give it the name of the database. By default, we're using NJMON. The NJMON and NIMON can go into the same database, no problem at all. And if you have it set so that you need a username and password, then you have to supply those with the minus Y and the minus Z. I've got the default database set up so it doesn't ask you for authentication and we don't do secure socket layer encryption yet so here's some quick examples maybe give you some ideas of what you'd like to save in my example i'm a dns uh, administrator so i've set influx as the host name for my influx db server or rather an alias but it's the same sort of thing right over here in blue we have the details of how to get to the database the host name the port number and the database name then in green over here we have these are the measures and then we actually have the stats in here so if you've got a database perhaps you want to see how many commits to sql statements is doing how many rollbacks mistakes is having to undo um, and perhaps the hit ratio on your sga then we've got things like sales how many items have been sold in the last uh, minute for example the average cost and the profit hopefully it's a bit bigger than that then perhaps we're looking at users you're running a web service of some sort how many are actually online the average minutes that they're staying for and the number of clicks per minute they're doing might be good to see what's going on or perhaps we're actually just using this for it T sorts of tasks so um, how long did the data load you could store that every day as it finishes when you take in ingesting data then perhaps how long the backup took and how long your batch run took and then you could draw graphs of these taken longer uh, each day or week okay then i thought we had a little bit of fun while we try and uh, prove this is all working fine uh, mr b walker well done i hacked a piece of code that i found on the internet is public domain so that's okay some some maths up here a while loop sleeping for it's going to called measure it's in a directory this is the measure for ax because i'm running on ax it's the measure is called surprise and the stat in case there's only one in here there's no comma separation for up more than in here but we got wave and this plot number and the plot is generated by orc doing some mathematics we don't really care about the details my influx db is on a server called influx this makes life simple i stand Standard port for InfluxDB and it's in a database called test that I don't think actually exists yet but uh, there it is we'll actually uh, run this command now and it's telling us that it's not found there's something it doesn't like about that that's because the database hasn't been found so uh, it's doing that every four seconds in here on the influx server we're going to actually connect to the command line to the actual influx DB D which is the demon actually running the database in here we'll show databases and now we haven't gone so we'll do a create database test our little script here stop getting complaints good so it was failing because it couldn't find the database called test it's in here now so remember in here the surprise, the measure becomes a table and the actual statistics become columns in the table if you're thinking of uh, SQL. So we'll select star from surprise and it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Let's use the test database so it knows which database to do that. I'll just go up twice and there we go. We've already found a whole bunch of numbers. Here's the wave uh, 21 and it came back down to 21 at the moment. Um, and here are all this is the timestamp that is actually generated by InfluxDB when the data arrives a fraction of a second down the network and here are all the uh, tabs so uh, the host name in here is uh, blue that's where we sent it from it's uh, running in power 8 mode and it's an s924 I can see in here by decoding the here IBM machine type model and here's the serial number shouldn't have shown you that really and if we do that again we'll find there's there's more data coming in here now i'll let that run for a couple of minutes and then we'll go to grafana and see if we can see what the graph actually looks like okay so this is grafana it's on the same machine as influx then we're going to go down here and create a data source i've actually already created it but if we click on it you can see all the details I'll give it a name of Influx BB and no, I clicked on the wrong one. Let's go back to data sources uh, here. Influx to be in test. I've pointed it at Influx database engine, which is actually on the same machine. Get told it which database is called test. We've already created that. And then we hit the save and it says, yep, 
it's logged in and it's got access to the data. Now if we go up here, we can create a new dashboard, open up the panel. In here, we want to find that new data source called test. Of course, once I'm happy that this is working, I can then put the data into my regular NJMON data base. Right, so um, we've got it in here. We need to tell it what do we want to see. Well, there's only one measure called surprise, and the value is wave. And there we go. Now, if we zoom into it a little bit, we'll see it's generating a sine wave. If you're very quick looking at that shell script, you may have worked that out. So we now have a nice sine wave generator in here. We're pretty sure this is doing as expected. Okay, I did things like putting a small uh, title in here and just for fun down in here. And we can see that every couple of seconds, it's going to show us more data. And that's the end of this video, 12 in the series on NJMON adding your own stats. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video or you've learned something. Please subscribe so you'll be told when the next video is released.